Hello, ninth graders. Uh, as I mentioned yesterday, today we're going to continue talking about geometric sequences as functions. So pull out that paper. We're on the back side of it. And I, again, I don't know what page that is, but we're on the, on the back. Okay. So this is what we did yesterday, geometric sequences as functions. We left off on problem number four. So we will start with problem number five. Now, notice for each sequence, uh, it says identify R and then answer the questions. It doesn't tell us to write the next three terms like yesterday. So, but we, first we need to know R. Well, let's see. Over negative two, is negative two, negative eight over four is negative two. So R equals negative two. So we found R, see our common ratio, see? Second one divided by first one. And we got the same thing as we better. And there's our R, okay. So A, write a re recursive equation for this sequence. Now remember with recursive, you have to identify the first term. So the first term, f of one is negative two. Then we can write our formula, f of n, that's the way that is read, f of n, equals f of n minus one, see the previous term, times r, which is negative two. Make sure you put that negative two in parentheses so it doesn't look like it's a subtraction problem. Okay, there it is. A recursive, recursive equation. B, write explicit equation for this sequence. So our explicit equation, f of n equals first term, which is negative two, okay, times r, which is negative two, to the n minus one. Now, look, the base numbers are the same. This negative two is to the first power, because there's only one of them. And we learned back in the eighth grade when we did exponents of the first of the year, that when you have exponents with the same base, you add the exponents. So this comes out to be f of n is the base negative two to the one plus n minus one, okay? Which is negative two, well one and negative one is just zero, so negative two to the n. Again, you want the negative two in the parentheses. And if you don't put it in the parentheses, it will take some points off. Because it, it has to be there or you're gonna end up with some wrong answers, okay? Now it says use the explicit equation, that's this B part, to find the 15th term. So, F of 15 equals, now if I use this top one, so I'm gonna show you, use the top one, you're gonna get the same thing here. Negative two to the one times negative two to the 15 minus one. Okay. So this is negative two to the one to the one times negative two to the 14. And as we saw up here, we're reminded up here from what we learned in the eighth grade, this is negative two to the one and 14 is 15, which we knew right from the start because from here we ended up with negative two to the fit to the end. And in this problem, n is 15. So you can see we did it right. Now, if you multiply that out, I'm gonna take my magic box and multiply that out. To the 15th power. We know it's going to be 
negative because we have an odd exponent here. You'll have an odd number of negatives multiplied together. So this is going to be negative 32,000. 768. See, 32,768. Okay. Now, you go ahead. I'm going to give you a minute to uh, do number six. So I'm going to give you a minute. Try to do number six yourself. Okay, next time we'll just pause the recording, but I thought I had, but I didn't. Okay, so let's see. Negative 8 over 16 is negative 1 half. 4 over negative 8 is negative 1 half. So R is negative 1 half. Write a recursive equation. Recursive, remember, we need to identify the first term, f of 1 equals 16. Then we have f of n equals f of n minus 1 times r, negative 1 half. Okay, put that r, that negative 1 half, in parentheses. B, explicit. So we have f of n equals first term, 16, times r. We want, of course, r is negative. It's got to be in parentheses. It has to be negative one half, that's r, to the n minus one. There's your explicit. And c, find the 11th term. So f of 11 is equal to 16 times negative one half to the 11 minus one, which is 16 times negative one half to the 10. All right, well, let's see what that looks like. Okay, well, look, Back in the eighth grade, you also learned this. See, 16 is, goes, if you factor it, it's two times two times two times two. See, because 16 is four times four and four is two times two. So uh, this is actually equal to, this is two to the fourth, two to the fourth, or uh, you could write it as, actually negative two to the fourth, because with uh, an even number of negatives, this is gonna be a positive 16 to the still, isn't it? Times negative one half to the 10th. Now you could have multiplied this all out, you know, and and actually you could have written this as negative two to the fourth times negative two to the negative 10, which is negative two to the negative six, which is one over negative two to the sixth, okay? Which uh, is one over 64. Negative two to the sixth being a positive 64. Now, I don't know if you everybody, oops, sorry, I got it off the screen. I don't know if everybody remembers this stuff from the eighth grade. Hopefully you do. Now, if you didn't, Look what happens. If you took a negative one half 
to the tenth power. Okay, if you did that, you would get this right here is one over 1024. And so this would give you 16 over 1024, which reduces to one over 64. So I, I I've talked to Mrs. Johnson about what's, this is probably what we're looking for. It's a lot of exponent work that you're gonna have to remember from uh, eighth grade or You know, I don't know how much, we'll have to talk about this. Okay, but right now that's what we did. Let's go on to number seven. Okay. One over five is one fifth, one fifth over one is one fifth, looks like R is one fifth. I'll press pause and fill this out. When you're done, come back and let's see how you did. Okay, right recursive. Let's see. So we need to identify the first term equals five. Okay. Then of course we have f of n equals f of n minus one times r, which is one fifth. That's recursive. Don't forget the first term. This is useless without it. The explicit f of n equals uh, first term five times r one fifth the n minus one. Okay, now use it to find the 20th term. f of 20 equals five times one fifth to the 20 minus one, which of course is 19. Well, you can do this as, this is five times one over five to the 19. Remember this exponent goes with this and this, but one to the 19 is one and, and five to the 19, which would be five over five to the 19 which of course would be one over five to the 18, because this five would divide off one of these. And for those of you that remember your exponent rules, you know if you divide, you subtract exponents. 19 minus one is 18. Okay. So that would be our answer right here. We certainly wouldn't multiply that out. It's way too big a number to write out as a regular number. We'll leave it as an exponent. Okay, number eight, press pause, do number eight, see how you do, and then when you're done, come back and let's see. All right, now that you're back, let's take a look. Three over one is three, nine over three is three, R equals three. So recursive, first term is one. F of N equals F of N minus one times Three, there's your recursive. Explicit, f of n equals first term one times r three to the n minus one. So we, don't, we can leave it like that, or you can go ahead and just write it, because one times anything is that thing as three to the n minus one. Okay. Now we're gonna use that explicit formula to find the 40th term. So we want F of 40 equals three to the 40 minus one. So F of 40 equals three to the 39. And that 
would be our answer. See, I think this should be fairly easy stuff, but for it to be that, you have to know these two formulas and how to use them, which is what we're practicing here. Okay, press pause, do number nine. When you're done, come back, let's see how you did. Okay, you should be back. So, anytime it's going positive, negative, positive, negative, or negative, positive, you know, the signs are changing every other time, you know that the R is negative. So R is negative, 100 divided by 10 is 10. 1,000 divided by 100 is 10. So R is negative 10. So our recursive, F of one equals 10. There's our first term. So our rule or our equation, F of one or F of N equals F of N minus one, the previous term times, and make sure you put that negative R in parentheses, negative 10. Our explicit. F of N equals first term 10 times R, which is negative 10 in parentheses, of course, to the N minus one. And the N minus one is always outside of the parentheses. It has to be. Okay, so there it is. Use the explicit to find the 10th. So F of 10 equals 10 times negative 10 to the 10 minus one. So the 10th term is 10 times negative 10 to the nine. And we'll leave it there. Yes, I know there's some things we could do with it, but we're not gonna make you. That will be fine right there. Okay, how'd you do? Now, if you're ever having trouble with any of this, make certain you ask your teacher. Okay, press pause, do number 10. Should be back now, now let's find R. See, four over 12 is one third. Four thirds over, uh, over four is one third and so on. So R is, one third. Recursive, first term, F of one equals 12. F of N equals F of N minus one times one third. Explicit, F of N equals first term, 12 times one third. It's a fraction, it needs to be, it has to be in the parentheses and your exponent outside of the parentheses, n minus one. See, look, if you would have written that as one third to the n minus one without the parentheses, see that exponent's now only on the one. That is why you must have the parentheses. Now it's the whole thing in parentheses to the n minus one power. So make certain you always put that in the parentheses. Okay. And then the last thing here, use the explicit equation to find the 17th term. So f of 17 equals 12 times one third to the 17 minus one, which is 16. Now, yes, we can mess with this as well if we decide to, because look what this is. This is 12 over three to the 16, right? Well, 12 is four times three over three to the 16. See, same base. This three will divide off one of those, leaving us with four over three to the 15. 
And there would be your answer. Right there. 4 over 3 to 15. Okay. Well, that's uh, geometric sequences as functions. Hopefully you find it fairly simple. But again, if not, if you have questions, ask. Okay, your teacher, because they can help you with that. All right. We, uh, well, we still have a little bit of the sequences unit left, but make sure you're doing your homework. Make sure you're showing your work. Make sure we can read it when you submit it. Okay. I will talk to you another time as we continue with our uh, unit on sequences.